Hello everyone and welcome to ZDOSPlus.com. I'm Wasi Motsi and I present you tutorial series which will introduce you to Vline Extreme. The first question is what is Vue? Vue is software that offers CG artists a complete tool set for creating impressively rich and realistic natural environment, whether in 3ds Max, Maya, Lightwave, Cima 4D, I think, and XSI. It's a fully integrated solution and the troll has been divided into eight days. In each day we're gonna cover a very specific aspect of view. In the first day we're gonna take a look at the user interface. So it will it will be very theoretical. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. Here is the view user interface. I decided to start with the top navigation bar. Here we have the file menu which contains sub-options. We can create a new scene, opening a new one, merging a scene with the current one, closing the current scene, or saving it. The option I want to point to is the Create Snapshot. It's a new feature in, in View 9 and it's really useful in some cases. For example, if I create a plane just like here, and I created the snapshot then another plane like this and I've done a lot of things you know I, c I can even go back to where I started and this is really really annoying so what I can do is go to file revert to snapshot 35 seconds ago okay no. And here he is. I go back to the start point. Really useful option. And you can use it. Uh, it saved me for the two days here. I've been working uh, on a project. It saved me a lot. I think it's a really good option. Here we have the export picture, which will let us. If I render here a preview, I can. Export a color picture, which will, which mean this one, or alpha mask or the depth map. It let me also export my object here. I have uh, export options like into any format like 3ds, C4D, COB, DXF. Any format you can parameter the op these options. If you are new to 3D, you have to take a look at this. What does this? stand for like generate color maps etc but if you have been using 3ds Max or any 3d program then it will be okay so let's go back to file and we can export the sky or the entire scene also we can we have the ability to load objects like this ones you can see here we have a little drive icon which send which means that the object is actually on your extra CD and not on your on your extra CD so you have to load it manually I think in, in my case I have always to load it manually from the extra CD because I don't have enough space to copy my my extra CD into my hard drive so it's okay now we have the Cornucopia objects. Cornucopia is a big database for objects and scenes for view. And you objects with this sign here means that you can buy them from the Cornucopia. Here we have these little options here which let us be able to create a new collection, locking this one, deleting the current one, etc. And this for hiding and or showing hiding the concapia collections, showing the best ones or just showing all the concapia items. Pretty useful. Okay. Now we have the import object. For example, I have here an object that I can load. Okay, just for example, and then I can move it and here it is. Actually is a human. As you can see here. 
pretty simple and you can save an object for example here save object and into any into the VOB type so we can open it with view later on we have the print and it's pretty basic I think we don't have a lot time here checking for update and cancelling the last update and a new option which have been implemented into view from the seventh version is will let you be able to purge your memory or clear your cache so for example if I created a plane here and just reducing by reducing the size and let's bring it a little bit here for example if I move my camera like this and I've decided to I show you okay here it is I go here ecosystem adding plant for example if I add this one the alocasia plant okay you can see that it's loading my object and it takes some time to load but it's here okay if I do okay here it is and if I create another plant here like this show you okay and okay and I put it here if I do the same thing I've done before for ecosystem adding new ecosystem like plant and take the same one alocasia and do okay you can see that it's instantly there and it doesn't need to load this means that the this plant is on our internal program memory so even if I delete this one here from here and also this one and completely create new planes like this one here and I do the same steps of run you can see there okay it's instantly there and this means that the plant is always on our memory and by purging our to memory so it will clear everything so it will be no longer in our internal program memory it's a pretty useful option and here we have the options option this is our options window and here we can premiere view to work like uh, as we want and uh, you can see it's separated in different categories here like sorry uh, loud save options preview options object options render options etc you know and to read the ecosystem etc so here in the loud save options what we have is the create md scene on startup and this will every time you launch launch view it will create an empty scene so if I deactivate it and I'm working on a s on, on a specific scene for example if I had plane uh, trains uh, etc or something I don't know in the scene I can set it as the default scene okay and it will make the current scene as the default scene okay and I prefer using create empty scene on startup pretty simple and easier so safe configuration up and exit so this means when you exit when you exit view it will save your options and configuration you made so any changes will be saved and the next startup will find the same configuration you made. save scenes with small pictures of last render this is pretty useful for example I can show you if I do file open now you can see this little previews here and this is the and this is what what the the option save scene with small pictures of last render mean so here for making backups and copies now pretty 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 useful and this is the bypass visual browser for scene and pictures and this option lets you the ability to browse and search for your projects so using a visual browser pretty simple I don't think it will be often used but I don't know I don't I have never used it okay now we have the enable auto saving which le 
the program so view to auto save every five minutes so every five minute view will save a copy of your current project okay and here you set the maximum auto save so if I want to I want to save I don't know any value 20 20 saves and I want a save every five minutes I can do so that's pretty useful in some cases you know when you're working on project and you, you forget to save your your work uh, view do it for you that's pretty 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 useful option I recommend using it uh, so if you have uh, enough space I recommend using the, uh, the auto saving now let's see the object options or now the preview options the preview options will let you let you choose here when you click on function options how the way choose the way you would see the object so if you want it as a sphere or a cube terrain etc also the material editor options here okay so pretty basic if you want a checker or uniform background color etc pretty basic and here you have the disable automatic material preview rendering for example if I if I create a sphere here okay and just resize it okay so it fits our okay like this okay I just wanna center it okay and let's click on sorry let's click on the sphere and here we have the material for example if I uh, for example if I apply a material like this I just double click and open this one okay and here we have our material okay as you can see and what if I before before I begin working go to options and then check disable automatic material and preview rendering and do OK and for example if I click here and I want to change the scale so and do it and change it here you have a little icon which means that the material has changed and we have to click here so it update and here you can see okay so if I take it to lowest value same thing okay and here you can see okay in, in the other hand if I uncheck disable automatic material preview everything and I want to edit my, my material here when I change it om it automatically update so if I take it to higher value you can see that it automatically change and here I can edit my displacement etc it will always work as good so delete okay now back to the options window we have the only render material previews in active editor pretty easy to understand and override sa saved options here it means that the option you choose here will be overrided or the options you've saved will be overrided. So here, the allow network internet connection pretty easy. Don't want to to lose time on this section here. So option object options. Let's go. Here we have some pretty basic options and like select all objects using material select in summary. Here it's preferences option. I think you can, for example here I often use this uh, option here in uh, when working on view so I want, want it to be checked and here for example use number of copies from scatter dialog when duplicating uh, this for for scattering enable automatic primitive numbering for example here if I if I let it check and create sphere 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 you can see that it's automatically updating uh, adding numbering so two three four five six seven eight you know and 
if I go back and choose like options to disable this one of the enable automatic primitive numbering this one is really good option you know it will create sphere 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 okay and then you can rename easily or as you want your material but just in some cases you maybe need this option here okay display real size of object in word unit so for real world modeling or creating preserve size of natural elements as creation and this one is pretty useful which is the offset duplicated object for example if I create a sphere here just over here and make size bigger and decided to duplicate it so edit duplicate you notice that the second sphere has been created inside or on the pre th the first sphere but this is in some cases very very annoying and here we have this option to correct this problem or this I don't know this phenomenon but I don't know how we call it but to correct this we have to check the offset duplicated object choose OK and now if I duplicate again now it will offset and will select it easily it's pretty simple and pretty useful option or parameter you can use it so I and check it. So center view objects when loading, pretty simple. And drop imported objects to ground. So when you import an object, generally it floats in the scene. And with this option, it will automatically let it on, drop it on the ground. So it's you don't even need to to bring it down or something. Here is for configuring poser if you're using poser so pretty simple to configure so don't lose time on this one and go to render options render options are pretty simple and very easy to understand so here I have pretty few options or parameters for the render small pictures of object before saving reset render settings when creating a new scene now I want to point to the abort render on clicking render area and uh, this is uh, in my opinion if you're working and rendering the same machine is an inconvenient why? because imagine that you work in another application and let's take for example the here and suppose that you're just browsing your photos and accidentally you click like this on the render area and it automatically stops the rendering so in my opinion I always prefer uncheck it you can also about rendering by pressing escape and this will do it here we have the flush voluminous data when render completes and limit displacement mapping memory usage here is the when you fill degradation in your performances and want to limit the usage of a view for resources you can check these two options so it will give you more resources or something like this uh, or more resources and then you'll be able to to work uh, at ease to work at ease okay so uh, now we have the end or redo options the maximum number of operation that can be undone at any time I personally always put it between 10 and 20 generally 15 so here is the maximum operation you can undo for example if you create a 20, uh, 15 sphere you can undo all the spheres so for example and keep his of operation and flow system resources drop below as you can see we have here the uh, system resources that uh, for example when you start you at a 100 percent of your uh, resources and then they are dropping dropping as long as you're creating and when it and when it drops uh, oops, sorry 
oops, <laughs> sorry. So, and when it drops below 25%, then <coughs> then then view will and now view when when your resources drop it below 25%, now view will delete the history of operations. So, pretty pretty basic. But I don't know if you all use it. But it's 25% in my opinion. It's very good, uh, even if you have, uh, um, I don't know, pretty basic machine. I think it will do the thing. So I can flush the history here if you want. Current system resources are 60%. This good. If I want to flush, we we'll go back to 60%. Pretty basic. And here the ecosystem options. Population warning threshold. So this is the threshold for warning. Uh, if you exceed the, uh, for example, uh, for example, if I want to create a scene, if I want to create a scene, uh, I'm creating a scene or have a, a terrain, and I want to populate it with ecosystem, then uh, my system would be degraded or unstable uh, or unstable. So using this threshold the pop-up warning will 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 display saying that uh, you have exceeded but it's pretty basic um, you have to just parameter depending on your performances I think the default value is pretty good so just keep it and I think it will do the thing so here we have some presets interface presets that you can load from here from the, this drop down menu uh, for example 3ds max okay and then 3ds max 2011 see it do the trick it's pretty simple to use so I'm um, put it always to default and you can have the interface colors so here you can change uh, and customize as you want reset options to default and restore the restore disabled messages Okay, so here, uh, for example, if you have warnings and you check the "Don't show this dialog again," here you can restore it and it will display again. Here for the gamma options, if you are on linear workflow, you can specify your gamma correction here and do it. For example, 2.2 here, as you can see, 2.2 and 2.2. This was just for example. But so I think we've covered all general preferences here, and uh, I think it's uh, already uh, already ready to use by default. So some uh, options here. So uh, I think next we're gonna see the display options. So see you in next video.